Hello, thanks for watching this video. The purpose of this short video is to better prepare you for the first lab in week one. In this video, we'll look at two topics. The first one is a short review on how to use variables. The second topic is how to create objects in Java. More specifically, we'll look at how to create turtle and world objects. So first, variables. One thing you should know about variables is why we need variables in programming languages. The primary purpose of simple variables are for them to remember stuff for us. And you may wonder why we need to remember in our program. Well, computers act very similar like human brains. So let me give you this analogy. If I ask you to do a simple calculation and tell me the answer, all of you will tell me the answer is zero. And in fact, in your brain, you basically processed this information in such a way that you remembered part of the answers. For example, the first thing you probably did is 2 times 7, that gives you a 14. And your brain, you kind of remembered it. And then you add 5 and 9, that gives you a 14. 14 minus 14, the answer is 0. That's how you got the final answer. The question is, well, where did you put this 14 in your brain? Well, there must be some cells in your brain that helped you to remember this intermediate result. Similarly, in computation, we need something to help us remember. And that is the purpose of those variables. So as you can imagine, when your program does the calculation, you need some variables to facilitate this process. Okay. And in Java, there are two kinds of variables. The first kind is the primitive variable. So those are kind of the simple variables. And the second kind is called reference variables that we'll talk about later uh, that is related to objects. So first, this is why uh, we need variables. The second thing is uh, you must create variable. The official name is called variable declaration. And you must also give this variable some sort of value be before you can begin to use it. Um, in your calculation. And this kind of giving the variable some value, especially at the first place, is called variable initialization. So if you look at this line in here, in fact, this line does two things. The first thing it does is to say, oh, I want to create a variable called x. Its type is int, which stands for integer. And then you have this equals to 5. This 5 is the initial value. Okay. So in the memory model, you basically have a variable called x. And this box is the content of x and has a 5 in it. Similarly, you have int y equals x plus 5 as this line, the second line. And what you did in here is int y. The type followed by a variable name means you want to create this variable of that type. And since it's, it's an integer, it has a box right to it. And x plus 5, what this really means is calculate this the value of this expression, which is the value of x plus 5. The value of x is 5. 5 plus 5, that gives me 10. So assign the result 10 in here into y. And that's why y has a value of 10 over here. Okay. And the last statement is the output statement, system.out.println. And the way you construct the output uh, statement is quite straightforward in Java. So the output, uh, if you have read the book, should be x plus y is and if you look at this expression, just be careful. And what this expression really does is to say, I want to calculate the value of x plus y, and then concatenate that value to the sentence in the front. So what I will see in the end is x plus y is 
15. Okay. Because the value of x is 5, the value of y is 10, 5 plus 10 is 15. The problem is, if you don't have these two parentheses over here, what's going to be the answer? I think it's going to be a little bit tricky, um, and I will leave this for you to figure out. The answer is no longer x plus y is 15. The last thing I want, to I want to discuss about variables is keep in mind a variable is a box and you can put different values into that box. The problem with this box is it only holds the current value. In other words, if you overwrite its old value with the current value, the old value is gone. You can't get it back. Okay. So if you look at uh, number three in this line, what I did in here is I created this age variable. It's of type int and put 18 in it. And for the second statement in here, this doesn't make any sense mathematically because mathematically this is always false. But as you should have learned in class, the equal sign in programming really is not the equal sign in mathematics. It doesn't mean the left side is the same as the right side. What this equal sign really means is, so it's more like a left arrow. What that means is assign the value on the right side of the equal sign to the variable on the left side. In other words, the only thing that may appear on the left side of the equal sign is a variable. So in this example, Basically, what happens is h equals h plus 1. So the first thing the computer will do is, OK, I need to figure out the value of this expression, which is the value of h plus 1. So first thing it's going to do is it's going to bring this 18 out, add 1 to it. And it can calculate the answer fairly quickly, 19. And what's going to happen is this 19 will be written back to this box to overwrite the old value. So afterwards, you no longer have 18 here, you have 19. Okay. And this also means the old value of age is gone. You can never get that 18 back. Okay. So the, the last statement will display 19. It won't display 18 at all. Okay. So those are the three things I really want to stress about variables. Now, the second topic is how to create a turtle object. Um, in Java, not only can we use variables to store information for us, we can also use them to do stuff for us. Okay? And this program may seem very complicated at, at this time for you, and it is totally common. Okay? So don't panic if you don't understand it for now. In fact, you don't even have to understand it. Let me just kind of go over this fairly quickly. Public class, it means this is obviously a public class. Why it is a public class, you don't have to know that for now. Uh, just be a copycat, say, but there is a need to write public class in the beginning of your file. Um, just like you, how you learn any foreign language, you start being a copycat. Right? You just repeat what other people says. And in programming, you kind of start on, on the same thing. So public class and this hollow turtle is the name you pick for this class. And one thing you should know is your class name must be exactly the same Oops. as your file name. Okay. So when you save this file, it has to be named holloturtle.java. And then inside your class, you have this magic line, which is the main function header, public static void main, and inside this, the parenthesis, you have this string square bracket args. Okay? And inside this main, inside this set of curly bracket, this set of curly bracket, this is really your code. Okay? And all the codes in here 
are executed top down from the first line all the way to the last line. So it's called sequential execution. Um, and inside this main function, um, I'll focus on the first two lines other than the comments. Okay, so for this line, basically what I did is if you look at it, world w. World is a type. Okay. W is a variable name. So what that's that really means is I want to create a world variable and in that inside this world variable I may put something in there. In fact you can put turtles in there. That's the next line over here. Okay. But in this line I just say I want to create a world object using the new operator. Okay. So this is different from how we create integers. For integers you just say int x equals to five. You don't need the new operator. But for objects you do need it. In fact every new operator operation will create a new object. So basically for this first for this first line in your main method you created a new world. Its name is W. And then uh, for the second line here, you basically created a turtle, as you can imagine. Its name is Jose. And you still use the new operator, right? And when you say the turtle, well, you have three things in the parenthesis. This is slightly different from the world. And what those three things really mean is, I want to create this turtle called Jose, and I want to put it into a world. Where do I put it? This 200 and 100 basically tells you the location of the turtle, the initial position of the turtle. So 200 is like the x coordinate, 100 is the y coordinate. Okay, And this w is to say, okay, I created this turtle Jose and let's put it into this word w. Okay. The next seven lines in here is basically the whole purpose of doing creating the world and creating the turtle. We want this turtle Jose to do something for us. Okay. And what can the turtle do? A turtle can do many different things. And one of the things it can do is to walk around, to move around. So from those statements, it's, it's quite straightforward to figure out what we want Jose to do. The first thing we want it to do is to go forward 55 it's like 55 pixels or 55 units and then turn 90 degrees uh, when we say turn we mean clockwise turns okay. and then for and then forward again turn again forward forward so two forwards and then the last one is a turn and all those statements are executed in order so, in other words, if you kind of swap, for example, if I swap this forward with this term, the behavior of the turtle will be different in the program. Okay. So, order matters. Okay. Let me do a small demo. So, this is the program you just saw in the PowerPoint, and I've ported it into Dr. Java. In the first lab, you'll learn how to set up Dr. Java and how to use it. Um, basically, uh, it's quite straightforward. You can type in your program, then you compile. Uh, in the uh, compiler output pane, you can see compilation completed. There's no error. And then you can run. What's going to happen is, I have this new window pop up. In fact, this canvas is my world and I have this turtle. The initial position of the turtle is over here. And then based on the rules we asked turtle to do, it basically kind of made this U shape or N shape uh, on the screen. Okay. As for why it gives us that, uh, I think you can analyze each statement and figure out why you end up with this N shape. The last thing for this video is something about the lab. Okay, There are something I, I want to stress again. For the CIC 8A labs, uh, we'll do pair programming. 
What that really means is you will work with a partner that is assigned with you uh, together on the lab problem. And before the lab, you will receive seat assignments. So you will be assigned to a computer. So is another student in the same lab. So you two will work on the same lab together. And each lab has two components. The first component is programming component. Basically, you follow the lab instruction, work in pairs, and you have 40 minutes to finish this part. And this part is very important uh, for you to practice important concepts and ideas. And it will also be very helpful for the second part, which is the quiz. So it's a short quiz, just 10 minutes, and it, it will be done individually. So once you're done with the programming component, you can take turn to finish the lab quiz. And we have about 40 computers in the lab. And we have more students than 40. So what that really means is once the pair is done with the programming component, one student will begin to do the lab quiz. The other student will wait at another place. Once the first student is done with the lab quiz, then the second student can, can kind of uh, do his or her own lab quiz. And all together, uh, both components are worth 10 points. Okay, And make sure you go to your own lab section. If you go to another lab section, what's going to happen is you will lose the first part. You will lose the participation point, the programming component. Okay, But you can still do lab quiz if there is a computer free, which is not uh, likely. So make sure you go to your own lab section and finish the lab. That's all I want to talk about uh, for the lab in this uh, week one. Good luck uh, in the lab and enjoy the lab. Thank you for watching this video.